Good afternoon all. I'm um, Sudisha, uh, Department of Chemistry from India at Ingersakur and uh, we are dealing with the course name Engineering Chemistry and today our topic is lead acid battery. So regarding the previous topic, um, what we discussed in the previous topic, in the previous topic about uh, uh, introduction of batteries, briefly discussed about introduction and uh, next come to the next one about types of batteries. So we discussed about types of batteries and come to the next topic about in the types primary batteries and secondary batteries and regarding the primary batteries also what are the applications of different types of primary batteries and what are the applications of secondary batteries and what is meant by reserve battery and what is uh, meant by fuel cell and types of fuel cells and come to the next one is regarding about solar cells and the word that solar cells also application part some of the application part we discussed and regarding that one lithium ion batteries also we discussed in the previous class so come to the present class and today's class i am going to discuss about lead acid battery so first of all we should know what is lead acid battery so lead acid battery is nothing but which is a secondary battery so in we as you know that the difference between primary battery and secondary battery are primary battery is is nothing but non rechargeable batteries are called as primary batteries as we know that we are using uh, primary batteries in uh, it may be in toys or maybe in remotes we are using that batteries and mostly like we say as primary batteries and come to the secondary batteries nothing but rechargeable batteries which are called as secondary batteries so in the rechargeable batteries lead acid battery is also one of the rechargeable battery so this come to the lead acid battery as it is a secondary battery which is acts as electrolytic cell as well as electrochemical cell nothing but voltaic cell it may be electrolytic cell or voltaic cell both are electrochemical cells but come to the lead acid battery which is acts as both nothing but electrolytic cell and as, as well as voltaic cell so here come to the, this battery construction of this battery so if you observe the diagram in this diagram if you see that one so it consists of six cells which are alternatively arranged that means the cell consists of anode and cathode so anode is nothing but represent with negative and cathode is with positive it here anode is pb and cathode is pb o2 so here this cell consists of anode and cathode that means here this is anode and this is cathode which are alternatively arranged nothing but six cells that means how many electrodes are arranged here 12 electrodes are arranged so 12 electrodes are alternatively arranged so each cell consists of two electrodes so six cells with 12 electrodes are arranged here so one is anode and second one is cathode. So anode is represented with PB and cathode is represented with PBO2. So anode is PB and cathode is PBO2. So these anode and cathode are separated with wooden sheet. So that means there is chemical reactions takes place and not only that which releases electrical energy so that these two can be separated by a wooden pieces. So this arrangement, the total setup which is there, so this setup consists of six cells each cell consists of anode and cathode and anode is represented with pb and cathode is represented with pbo2 so here it consists of 12 electrodes nothing but every cell consists of two electrodes one is anode and one is cathode and here the electrolyte is here we will take the sulfuric acid as you know that so h2so4 so that one taking as electrolyte. So here we will take 21% of H2SO4 which is acts as electrolyte. The remaining percentage is nothing but dilute with water. So here if you observe that 21% of H2SO4 is acts as electrolyte which is diluted with remaining amount of water. So this is nothing but construction of battery. So that means a lead acid battery which is a secondary cell is consists of both electro which is acts as both electrolytic cell and as well as voltaic cell and which is consists of six cells each cell consists of cathode and anode which are alternatively arranged and these are separated by wooden pieces and pb is acts as anode and pbo2 is acts as cathode 
So PB is represented with negative and PBO2 is represented with positive symbol. And here the electrolyte is H2SO4. And come to the next one. Here in this process, according to the second results, these are discharging as well as recharging reactions both are takes place. So come to the discharging process. While discharging which is acts as voltaic cell. What is meant by voltaic cell? Here the chemical energy will be converted into electrical energy. As I said PB is acts as anode right. So when we take the PB which undergoes oxidation reaction. So if it undergoes oxidation. When it undergoes oxidation reaction which liberates the electrons. That means it forms 2 pb2 plus plus 2 electrons nothing but oxidation processes takes place the pb2 plus which is released that undergoes reaction with fo so4 2 that means here pb2 plus plus so4 2 minus it forms pb so4 so what is the overall reaction we get here we get pb because this pb2 plus this pb2 plus get cancelled which are in opposite side so pb plus so4 2 minus which gives PbSO4 plus 2 electrons. So, whereas at anode oxidation takes place and at the oxidation process which liberates the electrons by producing PbSO4. And next one come to the PbO2 which is acts as a cathode as I said cathode at cathode reduction takes place. What is meant by reduction? Reduction means gaining of electrons. If you see the PbO2 so PbO2 which gains the electrons right. So this PbO2 which gains the electrons liberated at anode. So that electrons gained by the PbO2 and not only that the electrolyte which is present. That electrolyte is H2SO4. How it dissociates? It dissociates as H plus A, SO4 minus. That means the H plus ions which are liberated that H plus ions are liberated SO4 minus. SO4 2 minus ions also participate in the reaction and which forms PbSO4. And according to the PbSO4 and which liberates some amount of water also and some amount of energy. So that means PbO2 here it undergoes reduction process by gaining of electrons. So at anode oxidation takes place and at cathode reduction takes place. By undergoing oxidation and reduction here we can write the overall reaction. So come to the overall reaction which liberate PbSO4 and some amount of energy. That means what is the process takes place here? The process is nothing but here which is acts as a voltaic cell whereas the voltaic cell which produces which converts chemical energy in form of electrical energy. So that means the electron liberation will take place due to the liberation of electrons some amount of energy is also come out. So the deposit the deposited PbSO4 can be reverted in form of PB and PBO2 that means it in this case that means after usage of some time every battery will be discharged that means if you take the mobile battery also for example if you are using one or two or three hours after that what happens the battery that means it will be dead that means it will come to the zero right again we will recharge it so at that time when we apply the energy when we, whenever we supply that energy so at that case the recharging process is takes place. That means the PbSO4 which is there that will be reverted. Here the PbSO4 only that means here again the recharging process is takes place at the time of recharging process which is acts as electrolytic cell. What is meant by electrolytic cell? Electrolytic cell means nothing but whereas here the chemical energy will be converted in form of electricity. That means when we apply it what happens which which produces energy right which release electrons so which liberates the electrons so that the power supply will be takes place that means here the electric electricity from electricity to the chemical dissociation will take place so sorry the electrical energy will be converted in form of chemical energy that means here the electrolyte which is there that will be dissociated if you take the electron what is the what is the electrolyte we are taking H2S4 right but in if you observe the discharging reaction what is the compound which is produced PbSO4 so here the PbSO4 which will be dissociates which undergoes the ionization and again it dissociates as PbO2 and again it liberates Pb so that means what happened there the cell reactions are reverted that means the cathodic 
anodic reaction which is takes place in recharging that will be takes place at cathode at discharging process discharging lo em ayind ikkada at the time of discharging the reaction will be takes place at cathode that will be takes place at anode in recharging process that means the cell reactions are reverted here so due to the reverting of cell reactions here it produces pp1 same like as cathode also at cathode also what happens here actually the reduction takes place as you know that anode oxidation cathode reduction but the cell reactions are reverted here so when it reverted in this case the pbso4 which liberate pb and again so4 two minus ions so due to this one if you observe the overall reaction again the pb and pbso4 water whatever the components are participated in the reaction the pb pbo2 and h2so4 again liberation will takes place so this is about recharging and discharging so at the time of discharging it acts as voltaic cell so that voltaic cell which is nothing but which converts chemical energy chemical energy into into yes chemical energy into electrical energy what is that cell this is called as voltaic cell so when it acts as voltaic cell when it is discharging when it is discharging while recharging again we are doing recharging process right so while recharging so while recharging which is acts as electrolytic cell here in the electrolytic cell the electrical energy by providing the electricity so that means electrical energy will be converted in form of chemical energy so that means this cell acts as electrolytic cell so by undergoing recharging and discharging the cell will acts as secondary cell so this is the mechanism which is takes place in lead acid batteries and come to the next next concept advantages of lead acid batteries what are the applications and what are the advantages what are the disadvantages present in the battery we should learn so regarding the advantages of this battery this battery which produce 12 electron volts of energy that means this battery consists of how many cells six cells so that means each cell produce 2 volts of energy so 6 into 2 means this cell consists of that means which provides 12 volts of energy and not only that this is very portable because in mobiles or in any electrical devices mostly we are using this battery right so which which are portable and not only that which are available in all different shapes and sizes so it which can be available in all different shapes and sizes also and maintenance is very easy and which is reliable and exactly working capacity is highly good highly efficient also next which offers long life cycle because every battery if you observe that any battery it may be um, camera battery sir may be in um, may be in uh, electrochemical devices or may be in our mobile batteries at least the lifetime will be 2 to 3 years right so based on the usage only it will work so the use that means which offers long long life cycle and which is good performance low and net high temperature also so these are the advantages of this battery come to the disadvantages lead acid battery is uh, that means the elements which whatever the elements we are using mostly we are using lead so lead element is very heavier element the element is heavier element so that is the reason this is one of the disadvantage of this battery compared to the other alternative elements this is heavier element and next one it can be charged slowly that means the battery can be charged slowly that is full saturated charge takes place 14 to 16 hours at least it will take 14 to 16 hours of time to again fully completely charged which is not eco friendly because so so many chemicals and 
the electrolyte whatever we are using sometimes it may be decomposed so that is a reason which is not eco friendly so these are the disadvantages next come to the applications of lead acid battery what are the applications of lead uh, mostly uh, as i said these batteries mostly used in cars or motorcycles or lorries or so many engines so in mechanical engines so that batteries are used and mostly when the car is running the cells are being recharged as electrolytic cell discharging it you uh, as uh, as i explained in the previous slide which is acts as while discharging which is acts as voltaic cell while recharging which is acts as electrolytic cells and also not uh, not only that these cells are mostly used in telephone exchanges railway trains are in hospitals in houses and so many household things we can use this app batteries so this is about the lead acid battery thank you like share and subscribe hit the bell icon for more updates